So just a quick market update on what's going on. We have a billion dollars of Bitcoin mystery, stunning cryptocurrency. So we actually have lots of institutions putting in billions of dollars into cryptocurrencies. This is why even though market's kind of flat and trading sideways, you're seeing, you're still seeing cryptocurrencies rise. Again, that possibility of Intel being purchased by Qualcomm is actually pushing both up. The valuations on Intel are terrible. It's it's overpriced for what it does. So, you know, I do I do love Intel, and I, I grew up playing video games on Intel chips, and they still are a great company, but they're losing money and they're just not doing what they're supposed to be. So, if Qualcomm does purchase them, this could be a huge move. Now, Qualcomm to me, in terms of the price to earnings ratio, is very very cheap. Ethereum cryptocurrency is also very cheap. Solana and Avalanche are very cheap. Just considering how many big institutions are actually trying to utilize them for transactions. So let's get into it a little bit again. Turkey did scrap the plans for the stock and crypto profit tax as well. Also, going back to my other channel, Coins of Wall Street, if you're interested in joining or becoming a part owner or investor into the cryptocurrency exchange, Coinage Fort, that is also still on the table. I think I have like a couple of spots available. And again, uh, those of you that do sign up, you will be, um, as you become part investors, you'll have your own actual email address that's linked to the um, Coinage Fort website and to the exchange. And then you'll also have access to my phone number and we'll have to communicate together via Zoom and and phone and so on and so forth. Again, make sure you subscribe to Coins of Wall Street for updates on that. That's my other YouTube channel. And also make sure you're part of that Patreon if you want to become a part investor. Now, again, this is actually really great news. Turkey scrapping plans for the stock and crypto profit tax, uh, which again is very, very pro crypto. So there's now probably more purchasing where people are going to be taxed basically to death. Now they are not. So there's really more incentive to purchase crypto. It's a huge deal. Again, the stock market, real quick overview, NVIDIA is trending up 3%. General Motors is down. The reason you're seeing General Motors Ford, multiple different banks downgraded them. And like I said, I told everybody, this, this uh, the vehicle market is it just... So here's what historically happens. When you purchase a car, usually within three years to three and a half years, it kind of bottoms out to a price that makes sense to purchase it. So what I've been doing my entire life, I usually buy a car that's about three to four years um, because at that point, it, when it loses a certain amount of money, for example, on like a forty, fifty thousand dollars car, you know, a $60,000 car, it might lose like $20,000 initially over those first three years. And now you can get it for like maybe thirty five. dollars so that sixty thousand dollar car is now thirty five. Well, everything past that third or fourth year, it's losing about a thousand dollars per year, which to me is perfect. I don't want a car where you know I, next year I lose twenty thousand dollars of value. So when you see 2022, 2023, these years where you know used vehicles are actually going up in price, that's a disaster. It's going to eventually kind of autocorrect to normality, and this is what's happening. Major banks have downgraded all vehicle stocks, vehicle companies. I'm talking about gas, combustion, ice, internal combustion engine vehicles, electric vehicle companies, all of them. So you're going to see a massive sell-off. I mean, nobody's buying these things anyways. Uh, honestly, I don't care if you make half a million dollars a, a year. Are you going to go and buy a $95,000 Ford pickup truck? I mean, seriously, it's pretty, pretty nuts. So I drive a car right now. I have 212,000 miles on it. And if the engine explodes, I'm just going to have it rebuilt. I'm not buying a brand new car. And it doesn't matter how much money I make. Even when we launch a crypto exchange, if I'm making $5 million a year, I'm not going to go and be a sucker and buy a $95,000 pickup truck. Because remember, I didn't make the money and get rich by just throwing my money into the garbage can, which, you know, uh, a lot of people try to show off by buying these $100,000 cars and... Oh man, you know, I, I I have a friend of mine, he has a eighteen hundred dollar. Just want you to understand this, one thousand eight hundred dollar per month. That's his car note. This man could have bought a four flat unit, rented out four all four units and been profiting off of it, and his mortgage would have been probably somewhere around there. And now he's a real estate owner and he has money and the building it's paying itself off. Nope, he bought himself a pickup truck. So 
you know, this is absolutely a long overdue downgrade. And I believe this is just the beginning. General Motors is not worth even $25. So at 45, I don't know where they're getting this. Ford is actually pretty close to what it's worth. Based on actually did the fundamental and technical analysis on Ford, it's worth about $8.50. So it needs to come down another $2, but it's not too bad. GM is, I don't know what's happening with with GM, it, it, it needs to lose a lot of value here. So that's why you're seeing a bigger sell-off in it. And the same thing is kind of hitting other companies as well. Now, again, you're seeing a nice little recovering cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is doing the best. But out of the bunch, like I said, because major banks are utilizing these two, you're always going to see the biggest pump in, yes, Solana, and the biggest pump in Avalanche. And again, Shiba Inu... You're going to have these cyclical events where meme coins rally. And once you get a couple of those signs that they're rallying, that's actually a good time to kind of pump, you know, dump money into it and then get out real quick and collect those tendies. So we may be on the kind of precipice of that. So Ethereum is at, it's actually a little bit above this, but I want to talk about the, the summary, the moving averages and oscillators so you kind of understand why the oscillators are actually very important. So the oscillator right now is neutral. We don't really have a buy or sell, but what is an oscillator? Let's talk about it and why this actually helps you. And actually, TradingView is a pretty great website as well for things like this. So let's talk about it just for a few minutes here. Oscillators are popular and widely used because they are leading indicators. And so, an, so oscillator is a leading indicator. So what's a leading indicator? Let's get into it. So leading indicators that can signal a possible trend change that is yet to start. So it, 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 the oscillator kind of tells you, are we giving a trend of an upward movement or having a trend of a downward movement? Okay. Now, this type of indicator oscillates between two limits. So as it bounces between two different limits or oscillates, then you can kind of tell what's going on. Okay. So it oscillates between two limits above and below a midpoint and its value to gauge the strength and momentum of a trend. Oscillators also typically signal if a market is overbought or oversold, which is really, really important. Remember, I was telling everybody NVIDIA between $92 and $95 was absolutely oversold. Now, what point did I start buying it at like 101? Still very happy at it, but it was oversold. The price to earnings ratio was under 50. It was at like 48. So the P ratio was cheap and it was oversold. So this is, you know, a great example of why oscillators are so important to understand. So they signal if a market is overbought or oversold, meaning the price is unjustifiably high or unjustifiably low. So when NVIDIA dropped to $92 or when you saw Bitcoin drop to $15,000, those were unjustifiably low prices for that crypto and that stock based on what was happening in the markets, okay? So which could which could point to a reversal to the trend. And this is what happened. We ended up going from like $15,900 to over $70,000 in um, Bitcoin. This could be used to determine when to close or open positions. So I do like when this oscillator here is really slowly starting to kind of shift towards buy or strong buy. We're kind of now in the phase of maybe just buy on a weekly basis or nibble on a daily basis. Don't go all in. Clearly, when a neutral oscillator is telling you that, you should follow it. Again, the stocks are a little changed. We really are kind of just hovering near record highs. Why that scary is, let's kind of talk about it. Just understand, stocks are struggling as China stimulus boost is kind of fading away. We need to really understand what's happening with the earnings coming up. And we're kind of hitting that topping point where we just may now be trading sideways, waiting for any kind of bad news where... Even okay news is bad news and just bad news is bad news, which will lead us down. So be careful. Dow Jones falls as NVIDIA hits higher and hits another buy trigger and home dives on earnings. So um, Fed's juice into crypto has analysts eyeing trimming opportunities. So I do agree that right now is a good opportunity for all of you to go through your stock and crypto portfolios and pick out the ones that really kind of just made you too much money or maybe they just made you no money or they're doing absolutely nothing. Start trimming those positions, putting that money somewhere else. So again, if you have some cryptocurrencies that are not doing anything, but you now understand that there's like 13 different banks that are going to be using Avalanche, maybe trim a little bit of those positions, sell 10%, 20%, and put into Avalanche, put into Solana, ones you know are going to be really, really utilized 
by major institutions that are going to be putting billions of dollars into them. And, uh, you know, let's just switch over and take a real quick of what's going on in the stock market. Uh, Tupperware is bankrupt fully, so you're going to see a little bit of these pump-ups and dump-ups. But again, when you're at zero, it looks like you're up 67%, but you're really not up at all. Trump Media Group is up 20%. Again, it's really not. It's down like 99%. So uh, when it's, you know, when it goes up a little bit, it, it makes it look like it's actually a big pump, but it's not. And then let's take a look at what's going on with so vehicle stocks are selling off c3 ai is up about two percent not a whole lot in terms of just upward movement downwards uh, dynamics luminar beyond all down about six to ten percent nicola is now down to four dollars this will eventually go to three two one and then just be fully bankrupt so do not be purchasing nicola stock again also lucid and rivian that i absolutely love and i want these companies to succeed I believe they have a 95 to 97, maybe even 98% chance of going bankrupt. It's extremely difficult to keep a company alive that's using about $180,000 of resources to sell a $90,000 car. So it's it's very tragic. And yeah, I mean, just look at the numbers for Rivian and Lucid, what it costs them to produce a vehicle and then what they sell it. And Tesla did this. Granted, I agree with all of you that know how Tesla works, but Tesla was losing about $2,000, exactly $2,300 per vehicle. But that money was being funded by Elon Musk. Every time you bought a car, he literally dumped in $2,300 into Tesla to keep it alive. And that was offsetting those losses and keeping the company alive until it went positive margin. That is not happening with Lucid and Rivian. And I understand that partnership, you know, and the infusion of money that just came from Volkswagen, you know, is going to give it a lifeline of maybe another year or so. But that's just kind of extending the inevitable unless they can really, truly, true, truly reach, I would say, kind of a better margin. If they could increase their negative no P, no margin, where they're losing less and less on a kind of consistent basis like Tesla did, they just can't survive. Uh, Lucid is now down to $3. So, yeah, here we go. Um, and uh, Xpeng is uh, also losing. Uh, what else over here? Fubo TV is down to a dollar. Uh, watch out for some of these YouTubers pushing Fubo TV and these other ones. Again, if you get a couple of earning reports that look like a disaster, probably don't purchase that. Again, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you smash the like button. Also, don't forget to join this Patreon for Invest with Alan. You get my buy alerts, sell alerts. You'll be able to travel with us. We, we, we travel every few months across the country. It's an amazing group of people. We invest into properties, real estate together. So it's very awesome. Even if you don't have the money, you and me and maybe two other people can purchase an investment property. We'll go in four ways, right? So if this property is $100,000, we each put in maybe twenty five, dollars or we mortgage out twenty five, dollars which then comes out to only a few hundred dollars per person. And now we have our own property and now we're building wealth and creating real estate. So uh, awesome, awesome opportunity. Make sure you sign up for Patreon down below. Again, if we are closed up because we only have a few spots available, <clears throat> check back in the month of October or the month of November because we only have about 10 spots available per month. Thank you for watching and take care.